What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan SE R-Line model. Today on the T1 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your rear brakes. This vehicle is equipped with 300 millimeter rotors, so we're going to be using our Zimmerman rotors paired with our Ate pads. This DIY is going to be applicable, but not limited to a couple other models as well with the same size rotors, including your 15 to 18 Q3s, your 16 to 21 TTs, TTSs and TTRSs, your 18 to 21 Tiguans, your 18 to 19 Arteons, and your 19 Atlas. Let's talk about a couple of the reasons why you may want to replace your brakes. Over time, they're going to wear down. Just like the brake pad material wears down, your rotors also wear down. Now, as they get older, discs develop a lip. So an easy way to check those is simply by running your finger across the face of the disc. If it catches on either end, more than likely, they're pretty worn. In some extreme cases, the rotors will warp and you'll have some pulsation at your brake pedal. For brake pads, the lowest susceptible wear is two millimeters. So if you have less than two millimeters of pad life, left that is not including the backing plate then you definitely want to go ahead and replace those another thing that we do not include with the kits but we highly recommend is replacing the rotor set screws those are what keep the rotors bolted to the hub they are pretty small and over time can rust and seize themselves to the hub or rotors in some extreme cases especially if you live in the northeast like we do but with that being said let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need for this diy and now for tools. For this job, we're going to need a couple basic tools, starting with a quarter inch and a three eighths drive ratchet. We have a, a three eighths drive and a half inch drive torque wrench. We have a small wire brush, a caliper hook, always needed for these jobs, a flathead screwdriver. We have a 17 millimeter wheel lug socket, a small extension, a seven millimeter hex, a T30. We have the genuine Volkswagen Audi uh, I call them beauty covers on the lug bolts. This is a tool to remove them. You can also use a small right angled pick. Moving on, we have a piston compressing tool. We're using CTA 1465 to be specific. That is available on the website at fcpo.com along with the MaxiCheck MX808 scan tool. That's what we're gonna use to actuate the electronic parking brake procedure so we can actually change the rear brakes on this car. Couple nice to haves are some Licomoly ceramic brake paste. We have some CRC brake clean. And last but not least, we have a half inch impact. This will make removal and install of our wheels a breeze. Now we have all our tools covered. Let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. Before we get started, my good people, it is important to know whenever you're doing a brake job, the pistons are being compressed into the caliper. Most people usually just use a tool and press on the piston. You can go ahead and release the bleeder valve to release some of that fluid so it doesn't flow back up into the reservoir. But more than likely, you're just gonna be compressing them without opening up the system. Now, this vehicle in specific is fairly new. The brake pads were not that worn. So the brake fluid itself has never been touched. It hasn't been changed, added to, or removed from. So my point here is whenever you're doing a brake job, you wanna keep an eye on your reservoir. You wanna make sure that you're not overfilling the system when you're compressing the pistons. Uh, in some cases, you may have to remove some brake fluid from the reservoir before you start your brake job. This car has never been opened. The system should be fine. Um, we're gonna keep an eye on the max level here and make sure that it doesn't overpressurize as we're compressing our pistons in. But I just wanna give you that quick tip. So again, always keep an eye on the reservoir before you get started. If you're not sure, crack the cap open, take a little bit of fluid out. You can always add it later. With that being said, let's go ahead and get the car up in the air and get started on this brake job. All right, my good people, today we're gonna to be working on the rear passenger side of the Tiguan. However, the passenger and the driver's side are gonna be identical. We have our car situated up in the air. To get started, let's remove the beauty covers off our lug bolts. We're using the genuine Volkswagen tool as this car is fairly new and shockingly it still had it. Again, a right angle pick will work just fine if you don't have this. With those removed, we have five 17 millimeter lug bolts to remove, including the one that has the lock on it. It still takes the same 17 millimeter socket. Start with that. With that off, now we have access to our caliper as well as our brake disc. I'm gonna go ahead and hit everything with a little bit of brake clean just to get any extra dust and grime off before we start working. That way we don't get too dirtied up before we handle our new parts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two dust cover or the boot dust covers so we can access our guide pins. 
Now, before we actually go ahead and remove the brake caliper, we're gonna wanna hop inside the vehicle and release our parking brake electronically with our scan tool. So let's go ahead and hop in real quick and take care of that. All right, inside the vehicle, we're gonna use our MaxiCheck MX-808 to release the electronic parking brake so that we can compress our piston and work on replacing those brake pads and discs. Now, to do so, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you press the start engine button once without pressing the brake pedal. That way the vehicle doesn't actually start. It'll just put it in an accessory mode. Now, once we have that done, we can go ahead and hit the service function on the Autel, find the electronic parking brake feature, select the make we're working with, which would be Volkswagen. And do automatic selection so it can detect our VIN. And like I mentioned earlier, you can use a VAG software for this or something different similar to this Autel. Most of them will be able to do this function. Now, for some reason, the Autel will only pick up up to 2017, even though this is a 2020 model. However, the system itself is going to be the same. It'll go ahead and work just fine. Once we get to that, you're going to hit the hot function key. Go under brakes. Electronic parking brake function. Hit OK. You're going to release the electric parking brake. You can literally just press down on the button. Ours is already off. We can hit OK. In this program, the following steps are run through. Start the brake pad chain, change the brake pads, and the brake pad. So basically, this is going to set us up so that we can replace our brakes. And then once we're done and everything's reinstalled, it'll set everything back into position. So for now, it says, which step do you want to perform? We're going to start brake pad change, which means open them completely. We're going to do that by pressing number one, and you should be able to hear the motors actuate in the back of the car. Now the brakes are fully open. At this point, we can leave this as is. And then once we have everything replaced in the rear, we can come back in here and basically end, this, end the system. It'll set everything back into place. So let's hop back to the rear of the T1 and uh, continue with our brake job. Now we have that situated, we can go ahead and work on removing our caliper. We're gonna need a seven millimeter hex. For the top one, I like to use a small extension on it just so I can clear the brake line as it's kind of in our way. The bottom one you should be able to access without the extension. What also helps in this case is I am using a flex head 3 8 drive ratchet. So it really allows for a lot of wiggle room in here. One last thing to note, on the passenger side specifically, you have the fill pipe that goes down into the fuel tank that's just in your way, just a hair. You can work around it, no problem, but the driver's side does not have that. So you have a little bit more room to work with. Not a big deal. All right, there's our second one. Set those to the side. Now at this point, we can pull the caliper off. Because the brake hose is so short and we have an electronic cable going to our electronic parking brake, there's not a lot of wiggle room. Um, I may almost recommend using a bungee cord or something of that sort. You can also just kind of prop the caliper on top of everything, which is what we're going to do right now. Use my flathead screwdriver from earlier. Just kind of pry it off a little bit. And we'll set that on top of the carrier. Two, or one important thing to note before you take anything else off is the brake pads. While they physically have the same material width and all that, the inboard pad has this anti-rattle clip built into it. So when you install your new pads, you wanna make sure that the one with the anti-rattle clip is on the inboard side and the one without anything is on the outboard. This vehicle isn't equipped with any brake pad wear sensors, so you'll notice we didn't have any at the beginning of the video. There's neither one on the driver nor the passenger side. So it makes life a little bit easier. Kind of an old school way of knowing when your brakes are bad is it's by feel, baby. We're gonna get rid of this pad. Now we're gonna take our inboard pad off and we're gonna hang on to this for just a minute and I'll show you why in a little bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on removing our rotor. We have a T30 on our quarter inch drive ratchet today. Chuck that since we're replacing ours. And then what's cool about these cars is you can pull the rotor out without having to remove the caliper carrier. Boom. With that off, now we can go ahead and clean up our hub a bit, especially if you have any rust on yours. I'm gonna use a wire brush, but you can use a wire wheel, a wire brush, an emery cloth, 
sandpaper, whatever you have lying around. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit that with some brake clean. While that does its thing, we're also gonna take this opportunity to clean our caliper carrier, especially where our, pie, our pads are gonna ride on. So same wire brush, just gonna go ahead and scrape off the old grime and gunk from here. You wanna give your hub a little wipe down just in case the brake cleaner didn't get everything off. And we're gonna use our liquid moly ceramic paste so that hopefully our new rotor will not seize itself onto the hub so that the next time this job's done, it's a little bit easier. Now we can grab our new rotor. You wanna make sure your hands are not too grimy if you're gonna handle the disc, uh, mainly because they are zinc coated and you do not wanna hit them with brake cleaner to deteriorate the finish more than it already is gonna be. So we're gonna to try to handle that as best as possible, get that situated and then get our set screw in place. We're gonna go ahead and feed it in the same way the old one came out at an angle. Line up our hole for our set screw. I like to go a little extra with this and just add a little bit of ceramic paste underneath where it sits, mainly because I've seen too many on here that have seized onto the rotor or the hub, and it just makes life a little bit more hard than it needs to be. Again, T30 for our set screw. We're just gonna snug these up with the old calibrated wrist, but if you're following along at home and you wanna torque it down, you're gonna torque these down to eight Newton meters. So not a whole lot. I then like to go and encapsulate them in some more paste so that no water gets in there. Okay, now we have that situated. Let's grab our old pad and get our caliper ready for our new pads. We'll set our caliper somewhere like that. You'll note that the pistons on here have notches on them, similar to the old units that the VAG cars had where you spin the piston back into the caliper. However, for this car, you don't actually need to do that, which is kind of nice. We're gonna take our old pad and set it over the piston, kind of just holding it there loosely. We're gonna take our tool, get that situated into place. Try to keep it as centered as possible. And then we're simply gonna compress the piston until it stops. It should go in very easily. I'm barely using any force here on my fingers. Once it's bottomed out, we can take this off. We can get rid of this old pad. Let's sit our caliper up here for one more moment. We're gonna take our new pad and put a little bit of the sand brake paste on the ears. These are the ears where they ride on the caliper carrier. Just a little bit. It's not an art painting project. Art painting project? Art class project? I don't know. Again, outboard pad, smooth top, nothing to it. Inboard pad has the anti-rattle clip on it. So just remember that. We're gonna go ahead and slide our pad onto the carrier. Just like that. When you're installing your caliper back over the pads, you wanna make sure that this clip remains level. You don't want it to accidentally poke through the space here in between the caliper and the piston. That way, <laughs> otherwise it won't do its job. We're gonna sit that into place. Now we have our caliper on. We can go ahead and start with our top seven millimeter guide pin. We'll grab our small extension and our seven millimeter hex bit socket. Get that situated into place. All right, got that one locked into place. My anti-rattle clip on the pad is sitting inside of the caliper, so that's good. Now with that, we're gonna grab our torque wrench and torque both of those down to 35 Newton meters. And there's one. All right. With both of those at 35, we can put our dust cover back on, top and bottom. With that situated, we can now grab our anti-rattle clip and feed that back on as well. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our anti-rattle clip now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the wheel back on. We're gonna go ahead and blast through the driver's side and then you'll join me back inside the car for us to reset our electronic parking brake. So let's do that. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket once again to get all five lug bolts in. Once we lower the car on the ground, we're gonna torque them down to 140 Newton meters or 103 foot pounds, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna use my impact gun just to snug them up a little bit. 
Now let's lower the car down and torque up our wheels. Again, we're gonna to torque these down to 140 Newton meters. With that, we can put our beauty covers back over our lug bolts. Sweet. And now with that done, we can head back inside the car and wrap up our electronic parking brake procedure. Back inside the Torque, we're ready to end the electronic parking brake procedure. So you can see option two on the Autel end brake pad change, AKA close the brakes. We're gonna go ahead and hit number two. You should hear them actuate in the rear of the vehicle. Beautiful. And with that, that is going to complete the rear brake job on this Tiguan with an electronic parking brake system. Again, a couple of things to note. It is very important to have a scanner or some sort of software tool that can actuate open and close that electronic parking brake system on the vehicle. There are ways of manually taking those units apart and doing it by hand. However, I highly don't recommend you do that. You're also going to need to replace the seal in there if you do do that. Uh, with that being said, overall, a very straightforward job on these cars. If you like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments on what we did today leave them in the comment box below and if you like this diy and you want to see more like them please consider subscribing we make new ones all the time as always thank you so much for watching we'll catch you on the next one